What a year 2020 has been for Impact Wrestling's Chris Bay. This 24-year-old wrestler from Fairfax County, Virginia, had a breakout year, winning the X Division title and having an incredible match for the Impact Wrestling title against champ Rich Swan at Final Resolution. He did not win the title, but he did win the admiration and respect from wrestlers, fans, media, and wrestling hierarchy. He's the ultimate finesser. Thank you, Chris. What did that main event match at Final Resolution mean to you? Um, it, meant, it meant the world to me, man. Like, I honestly still don't know exactly what words to put it in. <laughs> and I've had a little bit to process it now. But it's, it's just something that I want to um, take with me for the rest of my life. You know, something that I want to get, uh, you know, the... the uh, images from it I want to get framed and put into my home, you know. I, I think that it just means a lot for me and for the culture and for people like my nieces and nephews and, and people all, all across the board like me. And when I say like me, I don't just mean, you know, young African-American children, but just people who are dreamers. You know, I'm a big dreamer and I've dreamed all my life for this moment and for that moment to be what it is and be as special as, as it became. And, uh, something that is so impactful, I could have never predicted that that was going to be what it was or what I would be living. But I'm so grateful that I am and that I was a part of that moment and got to share with a once in a lifetime performer as incredible as Rich Swan and do it for a company like Impact Wrestling that I've been working for since I was a, a kid, you know? How many times have you watched the match? Um, I mean, I'm. <laughs> ten, but who's counting, you know? <laughs> Did you get any specific tweets, messages, texts? Uh, yeah, I'm sure you got plenty, and I saw a lot on social media, but were there any that come to mind from certain people, whether it be fellow wrestlers, other athletes, family, that you were like, wow, that's cool, they messaged, tweeted about this? I, uh, I got a lot of them. You know, I, had, I had a good conversation with Tom and Dreamer. I had a good conversation with Gail Kim. Um, uh, you know, after the match, and then uh, as far as messages and stuff go, you know, like uh, I did get uh, a lot of cool stuff. I know something that stuck out to me that I saw on my Instagram was this guy that I went to elementary school through high school with, and uh, another, uh, you know, another African American guy, and he was watching the uh, the pay per view, and you know, he films the screen, and I see me and Rich in the ring, and. He pans over and he's watching the show with his dad on the couch, you know, and um, that just, you know, blew my mind right there in the best way possible because, you know, if uh, if I still had my dad, I, you know, I would have been supporting, you know, someone the same way and to have that same support from people uh, that I grew up with is crazy. Like a lot of my best friends texted me, you know, having watch parties, you know, when they were just all you know, ordered to pay-per-view and just in full rooms of people just going crazy watching me compete for the world championship and, you know, fully invested in this match and wanting this TV make history and live out my dreams. Um, it's just, it, it's an indescribable feeling, but I hope that, I hope it lasts because I want to feel this way forever. That's one thing cool about social media is you're able to get that instant reaction and different types of reaction on the positive from people you might not have seen or heard from in years. Yeah, 100%. And, that, and it went that way for sure, too. A lot of people I hadn't talked to since, you know, high school or wherever, where they were, you know, sending me videos about it, just letting me know, like, yeah, next time you have another show, let me know. I want to I check it out, you know. Are we talking West Potomac High School? We are talking West Potomac. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump ahead, but I want to go back to the match, but I will jump ahead. Is Chris Bay now the most famous person from West Potomac High School? Hey, I, I just might be. You know, it's either, it's either me or my, or my best friend, DeMornay Pearsonell, football player. It's either me or him, but well, we're gunning for that top spot. I'm, I'm going to take the crown right now, though, because in this very moment, I'm untouchable. Hey, that's two. That means Mount Rushmore. At least Mount Rushmore. <laughs> My Mount, my, hey, my Mount Rushmore is me with four different expressions. <laughs> well played, well played. 
the match that day, you're getting ready for that match. How does Chris Bay prepare that day, especially for that specific match, final resolution? Is it quiet time? Is there music? Is there talking? What is it like prior to the match? For me, it's quiet time. For me, it's uh, envisioning what I want to see and what I want um, to feel. You know, you never are going to capture that until you're out there, you know, because when you're out there, it's a different story. But for me, I just, I just need that peace of mind, and I need to be just with myself and be at peace and make sure that I don't throw my, my, my energy or my rhythm off. I can't get too excited. I can't get too nervous. I need to just stay as calm as possible um, and remind myself that it's no coincidence of why I'm here and it, it's no mistake and I've worked my ass off for this and I've, I've worked my entire life for this moment and this is just, uh, this will be one of many, you know, this will be one of many, but it's very peaceful. I, I like it peaceful before a contest like that. And then afterwards, how amped are you? And do you know it? Do you feel it that after that match, well, we did something special? Or was it until a little later that you realized that? I thought that way. Um, you know, I felt that way that we did something special and that, uh, you know, we changed the game. But it wasn't until I got to see it back and, and, and you know, feel that energy from everyone else that I really, really, really was able to um, see that something bigger than me had taken place. And there's a chemistry, obviously, with, between you and Rich Swan, the champ. And it's interesting because when a match is that good and you look at it, do you learn from that match? 100%. I think I became a better performer that night. And I, I thank Rich so much for being the performer that he is because it made me, he made me that much better in defeat, you know, um, and I think that my game going forward will forever be elevated because of the encounter that Rich Swan and I had in Final Resolution. Hey, musically, what are you listening to these days? Um, for me, I've been listening to uh, a lot of random stuff. You know, I always keep it different. I checked out the new Miley Cyrus uh, album. I enjoyed that, too. Uh, you know, I was listening to, um, you know, uh, this guy, uh, Don Tolliver, I've been listening to a lot of him lately. I finally got around to checking out the Juice World album. Uh, I enjoyed that one big time. I think it's my, my album of the year at this point. Um, people like, uh, you know, uh, Lil Baby and Lil Durk, I listen to a lot of those guys right now. Uh, but when I press shuffle, it's, it's, it's hands on. I'm going crazy listening back to the Riot album right now with Paramore. And that's where my brain really been at. Are you a musician too? Yes, yes, yes. I, I just dropped an EP um, about three weeks ago. It's called Odyssey. Just a short three-song EP. You can get that on, you know, Apple Music and Spotify and, you know, uh, YouTube, SoundCloud, wherever you need it at. But, uh, yeah, I am an artist myself. Do you play any instruments? I, I played the drums once upon a time. I don't know how good I am now. It's been a while. And I, I touch guitars from time to time. I'm not anything special. You know, I know a couple chords, but I can't say that I'm actually, you know, good. Pro wrestling and music, were those your two dreams growing up? Um, honestly, it was just pro wrestling. I always loved music and I always wanted to pursue music, but music was never something that ever was some ever I saw over top of pro wrestling or in its place, you know. For me, it was always just pro wrestling and music was just going to be something that I loved. You know, I made my first mixtape when I was six years old, you know, I've been writing songs since I was five, and um, I, uh, to even like, you know, um, the same day of Final Resolution in New Japan, you know, 12, December 12, 2020, you know, December 12, 2012, 12, 12, 12, 12 I dropped a, a mixtape called Beyond Good and Evil. Can't find it anymore, I deleted it all, you know, all of mine many years ago, but I dropped a mixtape called Beyond Good and Evil. Of course, the Beyond spelled with the Bay in capital, but, um, Music has always been a very uh, important part of my life, but I've never seen it over wrestling or even close to it. It's just something that I really enjoy to do. It's something that's just a part of me. Is it cooler being a pro wrestler or a musician, music maker? Um, it depends who I'm talking to. It 
depends what room I'm in, but I think like the pro wrestler thing just always wins because it's all it's always going to separate me. You know, if I go into a room, uh, if I go into the grocery store right now, um, we'll probably have more than one mission in the room. If I go into the grocery store, I'm nine times out of ten the only pro wrestler. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'd rather be different than one in the same. Chris Bay has been an X-Division champion. He's worn championship belts on the Indies. He had an incredible match against champ Rich Swan at Impact Wrestling's Final Resolution. I would imagine you want to be the world champion. You would have liked to have defeated Rich Swan at Final Resolution, and that's a goal to be that Impact Wrestling world champion. What's a music goal? Um collab with some of my favorite artists. I'd love to do a song with Post Malone. I'd love to do a song with Drake. I'd love to do a song with Justin Bieber, with Miley Cyrus. You know, if I can get collabs with those people, then, um, you know, the rest doesn't matter. I'm not, I don't need to, uh, I don't need to become, um, you know, like a, a multi-platinum recording artist or win a Grammy or any of those things. Those things would be nice and they'd be lovely, but I, I really just want to make music it's my favorite artist, uh, artist because that stuff's going to last forever. You know, I'll be, I'll be listening to that forever. And again, where can people listen to Chris Bay musically? Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you, uh, wherever you, you, you listen to the music, I'm there. Pro wrestling influences for Chris Bay are? Um, to me, Eddie Guerrero was a big influence. Uh, growing up, you know, and I don't think uh, anyone has had as much influence on me as Eddie Guerrero did. I was also a big fan of, uh, you know, John Morrison and Randy Orton and Edge, but as far as, like, actually influencing for my wrestling, I think uh, Eddie Guerrero was, like, the most influential. Did you see pro wrestling shows live in Virginia? I would go to see them at D.C. at the uh, Capital One Arena. You know, uh, SummerSlam 2005, Survivor Series 2009, Cyber Sunday 2007. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of the pay per views that would be in DC, I would go check out. Yeah, they have a lot of good wrestling in DC. Any indies? Do you ever check out any indies in Baltimore, or Maryland, any place like that, or no, or even in Virginia? No, nah, it was hard enough to get my dad to take me to um to the uh, shows at the Capital One Arena. So going to indies. Uh, just was so out of the realm, and to be to be honest, I didn't really know what the indies were until I started wrestling. When you were younger, did you ever meet any wrestlers? Take photos with them? Get any autographs? I met John Morrison when I was like ten years old. Uh, yeah, I met him like ten when I was like ten or something like that. And I also met uh, Batista uh, as well. I do have photos of all those things. Uh, and I also met Crime Time at one point when I was probably like 11 or 12. And I want to say that's about everybody right there. What is it like? Because now you're them. <laughs> you're your own person. I know that. You're your own wrestler. But it's like a whole 180. Here you are getting photos, autographs, some of your favorites. And now you're somebody's favorite. Is that... Do you rationalize that? Is that sunk in? Yeah, it does. And that's why I try to always be um, as open and kind to the people as I can be because I understand that when I met my favorites and they treated me, um, you know, with respect or they treated me with good energy, it helped um, catapult my love for wrestling to the next level and keep me wanting to be exactly where I'm at today. So I don't want to crush anybody's dreams and I don't want to hurt anybody deter them from what we do because what we do is something very special. Um, so it's very important to me now when, you know, I, I find out that I have a saying of mine or that someone tells me that they enjoy my work or that someone wants to approach me for a photo or an autograph, that it's very important that I make that happen and I give them the best experience possible, no matter how I'm feeling personally. Even though personally, I've been amazing. I haven't had, you know, I, I just, I'm too blessed to be upset, you know? <laughs> Did you play sports or involved in the band or the orchestra while at West Potomac High School? Uh, no, I did not. I was never, I was never really a fan of sports, and I didn't want to. Um, 
I didn't want to um, put myself in a position where I would get hurt and never be able to try to wrestle. Wrestling was always the bigger goal, so I never wanted to put myself in a position to do some something that was going to jeopardize uh, what I really wanted in life. Was college an option for you? Was that something you wanted to do, or did you get involved in wrestling right away? Um, it, it wasn't uh, really an option for me. I was never really good at school, and nor did I actually want anything out of um, you know a degree or anything like that. I didn't have a, um, a plan for school. I, I just wanted to wrestle, so I was going to go to college just because I thought that it was going to be the right thing to do, and I could be one of the first in my family to do it, but I didn't... Um, as we got closer to uh, graduating, I realized that it was something that I wasn't going to waste my time and energy on and, and the money that my family didn't have on. So I opted out and just saved up my money and did research to find the wrestling school and make that happen instead. And then how did you get started in pro wrestling and even find a school? Did you even have anyone that you could ask? Because there are some good schools out there and there's other schools that more or less just want to take your money. Yeah, no, so I, um, I didn't have anybody that I could ask, and I didn't have any friends who enjoyed wrestling. It was kind of just me. So what ended up happening for me was that I took a trip to Vegas for my 20th birthday, and I fell in love with Vegas. And um, in the process of falling in love with Vegas, I saw that they had a school called Future Stars of Wrestling, but I didn't get to check it out on that trip. Um, and then fast forward maybe a month later, and my dad passed away, and it was something where I I just needed, I felt like I needed to make things happen now or never, because I didn't want to procrastinate any longer, and have my mom miss out on the opportunity of seeing me create something with my life, and, you know, hopefully be able to help her and give back, you know, but, uh, so I called Future Stars of Wrestling and talked to the owner, Joe DeFalco, and he gave me the, um, information about the school as far as tuition goes and who their trainers are and how, you know, um, their, um, you know, system works. And I just felt like it was going to be a great opportunity for me to go there and also just to relocate and get out of my um, comfort zone of being at home and just try something completely, you know, insane. But something that I knew would just be a whole new scenery for me to start a new life. How was that transition from you coming from Virginia, going out to Las Vegas? Was that okay, just being away from everybody? Did it take a little while to get used to? It was great being away from everybody. I, uh, I, I love that aspect of it. It was just hard to get on my feet because, um, you know, it, you move across the country alone at 20 years old. You don't really have anything to fall back on or anyone to fall back on or, you know, anybody to help you really maneuver or navigate. So from that aspect, it was hard, but the easiest part for me was the fact that for the first time in my life, I had access to a wrestling ring, and I was around people who enjoyed wrestling, and people who cared about wrestling, because no one growing up really liked wrestling the way I did. So it was just nice to finally be surrounded by that. So as hard as everything was on the outside of um, training, you know, and, and getting adjusted to the new city and trying to find a job and all that other stuff, as hard as that stuff was, it was just... It all made it work to be able to every day, Monday, Friday at 4 p.m., be able to go down to Future Stars of Wrestling and just get in the ring and, and you know, earn my stripes. Would you say Future Stars of Wrestling and Championship Wrestling from Hollywood really helped shape you early in your career and get you the look from Impact Wrestling? Hollywood, you know, being television and then working with all the cameras and, you know, uh, learning how TV works, that helped me out big time when I finally got an opportunity from Impact Wrestling to show that, you know, not only was I good enough in the ring, you know, decent in the ring, but I also had camera awareness and I could understand what uh, television wrestling is, you know. Um, but uh, I think FSW just prepared me, you know, as far as from an in-ring standpoint and, um, working with uh, more established opponents who could help me get to that next level. And then Hollywood would help me out with all the TV stuff. And how did you land with Impact Wrestling? Through them coming to Vegas a couple times. 
times and me um two stars of wrestling being connected with them and me getting you know uh you know one-off opportunities and then me becoming one of the hottest free agents in wrestling i think uh the more they came to, um to the west coast they saw my development more and more and more and more people were starting to demand it in their comment section so it just became something that uh you know uh took over it in its own right until yeah, you know uh it was time to pull the trigger 2020 has seen a lot of challenges Chris Bay has seen a lot of successes in 2020. Not only in Impact Wrestling, he was also part of the New Japan Pro Wrestling Super J Cup. That is bucket list in itself. It's been an incredible 2020 for Chris Bay, and we're looking forward to 2021. We'll wrap this up with a couple quick questions. Chris Bay, AEW champ Kenny Omega on Impact Wrestling tells you what? tells you that you never know what can happen in pro wrestling and uh, just to stay tuned because you don't want to miss this. this is a revolutionary period in our industry would you, would you like to see a match with Chris Bay versus Kenny Omega 100% I gotta test myself against the quote unquote best in the world you know uh, a lot of people have deemed him that for a long time so if that's where I want to be headed, then I need to go ahead and test myself against them. And lastly, because I know that Dr. Ross is going to get very upset. He's very involved in these things, and I want to make sure I'm okay with Dr. Ross. He, and he does a great job, by the way. Did you learn any Johnny Swinger lingo or talk? <laughs> I learned too much lingo and talk from Johnny Swinger, from the Rizzats to the Brizard to the, the Gizemic and all the, all, the, all the weird stuff that that guy had to say. That was beautifully said. <laughs> Chris Bay, social media for you, and we'll get out of here. Dashing Chris Bay on Twitter and Instagram. That's Dashing Chris Bay, B-E-Y, not B-A-E. And, um, yeah, that's where I'm at. You can also subscribe to me on YouTube at Chris Bay. Just check out my YouTube channel. And yeah, I'm all over the place. The Ultimate Finesser. Thank you, Chris Bay, and thank you, Dr. Ross, wherever you are. You got it. No problem.